So the U.S. <coughs> applies its rules um, that the U.S. companies, non-U.S. companies, need to register with uh, U.S. authorities and respect local rules. Um, I think both approaches on either side of the Atlantic lead to imposing additional conditions, which I know um, very many people in the sector say lead to extra costs and actually leads to less cross-border trade. Um, and this patchwork of diverse regulation is problematic uh, for many in the financial services sector and it leads to arbitrage, reduced liquidity and unintended risk distribution caused by um, regulation. Now, how can we tackle this? And of course, I think the European approach is the best, having said that's what the member states do, favouring the equivalence requirements. But other experts are more in favour of having a mutual regulatory recognition. For me, both instruments have their advantages and disadvantages. But what is critical is the objective which they are trying to achieve, in, 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 in a sense, for the policy goals, without creating regulatory loopholes. What, what is at stake is that the leading position of both blocks they occupy in the world of global finance. And I do believe that if we do not lead others like China's for, you know, where shadow banking sector is booming, will step forward and, and find, uh, set their own uh, standard terms. So if we are to achieve um, this um, greater mutual recognition, we need to have more bilateral discussions on, on both informal and on formal level. And, um, you know, recently we had a lot of problems encountered in, in, in the practice in the derivative field where um, both blocks did uh, realise that there was urgency to have regulatory consistency. It is also evident that the current system of informal coordination under the EU-US financial market dialogue and case-by-case -case collaboration between the EC and individual US agencies hasn't really produced satisfactory results. So we need to do more um, in this and better cooperation would actually uh, enable leading roles of EU and US, as I said earlier, in setting global standards. But it would also give us a framework within which to consult each other on an early stage in the regulatory process um, by implementing international standards in a consistent way and having closer supervisory cooperation. The EU and the US would be able to rely on each other's rules and get the same outcomes. Now, this was one of the big issues with TTIP, that we have an opportunity with TTIP to try and address this, that we need to include uh, financial services in this. Um, and it would make it more legally and institutionally binding. However, there is a great reluctance from the US side to do this. And I am aware that the European so I keep pushing on this, but I'm not really hopeful, given the political differences we have on many aspects of the financial legislation. If you look at uh, bankers' bonuses, for one, where you know we have strict le legislation, the US doesn't. The, the US uh, banned the use of ratings, with the EU, we still allow it under certain conditions. And one of the more problematic ones, of course, is the FTT. Clearly lots of different opinions there. I think, uh, just to sort of wrap up, sticking to national barriers can be a temporary solution, but I don't think it's sustainable in the long term, especially given the major changes that, the, that are there in the financial sector. Um, when you look at the technological developments, I think it's going to be harder and harder just to have one set of regulations in, in one part of the world. We need to be thinking about uh, global management of this.
And uh, the, the other issue that we could have uh, is the minor issue of uh, my country having an EU referendum, which will clearly, given that the UK is the biggest uh, financial services sector, it will have si significant repercussions on this. But I do think it is high time that we make cross-border regulation work effectively and we need to challenge it even with those sort of challenges. And, um, and really, uh, my message to the Commission and others you know, in the Parliament is we need to tackle national discrepancies and exemptions. Thank you Great. very much.